For the past decade, the dominance of the Western world in the space domain has been unmatched. Sure, there was a slight hiccup in the transition between the space shuttle and the commercial crew program for manned spaceflight, but this was just a bump in the road. America now had reusable first stage rockets, and the West has been virtually unchallenged ever since. That's all about to change though, because while most of us in the West haven't been paying attention, China is quickly catching up from humble beginnings to become a major space power. Let's start with space stations. While the ISS is a fantastic achievement, it's definitely showing its age, and the conversation has shifted from expanding the station to exploring how to best deorbit it safely. NASA is fostering efforts from private companies to build their own commercial space stations, which I have covered in a previous video. However, despite the massive ambitions of these plans, they still have a long way to go, and it's not certain that they will be operational by the time the ISS crashes back to Earth. Meanwhile, China is building their own space station called Tiangong, starting in April 2021 by launching the Tianhe core module, which serves as the central component. Astronauts of the Shenzhou 13 mission recently completed a record-setting 182-day mission on board. The station now weighs nearly 100 metric tons and orbits Earth at an altitude of about 400 kilometers. In July, the Wentian module, meaning asking the heavens, will join Tianhe in orbit, and in October, the final module, Mengtian, meaning dreaming of the heavens, will launch. With uncertainties around the future of manned spaceflight in the United States, it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could see a period in time where China, not Western democracies, operates the largest space station in orbit. Next up, let's talk about the moon. While NASA does have ambitions plans for the Artemis program to land human beings on the south pole of the moon, China has equally ambitious plans. Just the other day, the Chang Mission 6 returned a capsule carrying lunar samples back to Earth safely from the far side of the moon, something not even NASA has accomplished before. Not only is the prestige and science performed by this mission important, but demonstrating that they can successfully bring a capsule back from the moon is an important stepping stone before they send their own astronauts. In collaboration with Russia and other countries, they plan to build a lunar base on the surface of the moon. And the race is very much on to see whether NASA's Artemis base camp or China's Lunar Research Station will be completed first as China aims to set up their base in the 2030s and the Artemis program faces inevitable delays. While the Artemis Accords now have 43 signatories, including nations like Australia, Canada, Japan, the UK, and of course the United States, China's IRLS project has now also been joined by Pakistan, Russia, Venezuela, and South Africa. Perhaps the most important factor in the continued progress of the Chinese space program is launch and reusability. This is the critical innovation that makes space sustainable. And since the Falcon 9 first landed back on Earth in 2015, SpaceX has enjoyed a monopoly on this essential capability. That all looks set to change though, as China has embraced a private commercial space sector, working to push boundaries and develop their own reusable rockets. By the way, before we dive into Chinese efforts on reusability, if you're enjoying this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would be much appreciated. It certainly helps them that while environmental assessments, FAA permits, and more can slow down progress in the West, China seems open to trying pretty much anything in the name of progress. 
For instance, in this video here, a Chinese first stage booster has an uncontrolled descent back to Earth over populated territory. To make things even worse, the orange you see is hyper-gallic fuels that are incredibly toxic to humans. Yet this is a risk China is willing to take in the name of faster progress. In this video, which recently went viral, we can see a Chinese rocket attempting a launch from a ship. I believe the technical term for what happened was the rocket blew the crap out of the boat. That's fine for them though. Now they know what needs to be fixed and they can iterate a very SpaceX development philosophy. Speaking of SpaceX, China and Chinese companies have no problems borrowing liberally from concepts that SpaceX has already shown to work. Just take a look at these grid fins. That's not a Falcon 9 we're looking at re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. It's a Long March 2D. China aims to make the Long March 2D partially reusable and switching to non-toxic fuel to bring down launch costs. This aligns with their plan for a wider shift towards reusable rockets. Companies such as iSpace, Landscape, LinkSpace, and Space Pioneer are all competing to get their new rockets off the ground, with several already launching successfully. As well, China's main state-owned contractor, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, has ambitious plans for reusable rockets of its own. KSC aims to launch two entirely reusable rockets in the next few years. The first rocket, with a 4-meter diameter, is planned for a 2025 launch. The second, with a 5-meter diameter, is scheduled for a 2026 launch. They are also developing the Long March 10, aka the Next Generation Crewed Launch Vehicle, a super heavy lift rocket specifically for crewed lunar missions. It's a big leap forward compared to previous Long March rockets. Development is complete as of April 2024 with a first launch targeted for 2025 to 2026. There was a successful first stage propulsion system test just recently on June 14, 2024. So, with much less stringent safety rules and regulations, fast iteration, a willingness to borrow design ideas from successful rockets, and a strong desire to prove their space dominance, the Chinese space industry is catching up quickly. Does this mean that Western space technology is doomed? Actually, far from it. Looking back to the great space race of the Apollo era, competition with another world power drove United States space technology forward by leaps and bounds. Personally, I welcome the new space race of the 2030s and the massive advancements it is likely to yield. That is, as long as China doesn't go down the road of weaponizing space, leaving large amounts of space junk in orbit, or continuing with more anti-satellite weapons tests that would have the potential of rendering low Earth orbiting unusable for everyone. What do you think about the new space race? Which country will succeed in landing the first woman on the moon and setting up the first lunar base? Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.